battle in Indochina is raging not in Vietnam, but here in the mountains of Laos. I'm currently in a country that I know virtually nothing about. This is Laos. It's a country not many people talk about, and even among its neighbors, not many people visit here. I came to Laos because I wanted to learn about the food here. I wanted to learn what Laotian people eat. And being here, I've learned that there's one particular dish in Laos that represents the culture here. Papaya salad is salad made with papayas, lime juice, chili peppers, and sugar. It's like every genre of taste in one dish. It's eaten at weddings, festivals, and funerals. It's really important to the people here. But wait, isn't papaya salad from Thailand, the country right next door? This is a complicated story about how countries use the opaque history surrounding food to their advantage, about how Thailand and Laos are fighting over papaya salad. And Thailand's winning. I'm here across the border in Thailand, or specifically in Isan, which is in the northeast part of the country. This... Chickens. This is where papaya salad comes from, at least according to Thailand. But here's the thing, papaya isn't native to Thailand, or anywhere in Asia. They're from Central America and were brought here by Portuguese explorers in the 1600s. By the way, I made a video about how Portugal influenced food everywhere, if you're more interested in that. We don't know exactly where Portugal introduced papaya to first, or even how it became a huge hit. Papaya salad, or somtom as it's called in Thailand, just sort of popped out of nowhere. By the 1600s, this French diplomat who traveled to Thailand had noticed that papaya was already commonly eaten all over the area. This region in particular was relatively pretty remote at the time. It was this sort of gray zone of control between Siam, now Thailand, and the French who were building a colony here. But why is this so important to Thailand and Laos? It's so, it's so hot here, we gotta get ice cream. One of the things you need to know about Isan is that it's Thailand's largest region and is home to like a third of the country's population. But it's also the poorest and least developed part of Thailand as well. Not a lot of food from Isan is eaten in the rest of the country because it's generally looked down upon. So you can see how Somtom plays a big role for this region. It's the home of something the rest of Thailand eats when everything else feels like it's being ignored. And Isan is proud of that and it sort of builds this image of a united Thailand. So I've been told that Somtom in Isan particularly is really different from the rest of Thailand in that it's more sour and spicy here. But to be honest, I don't really like Somtom that much. It's a mix of spicy and sourness that doesn't really work for me. So let's just see how this turns out. This is supposed to be the less spicy version of it. But it's it's good. It's it's not that sour. It's um more fermented than it is sour. It's better. Mana and I just found some papaya trees by the way. It's pretty cool. The Thai claim for somtam mostly comes from this historian who says that the dish came from Chinese Laotian settlers who immigrated to Siam. With them, they brought their tradition of making fruit salads called tam som. You can see where this is going. Since papaya was this really new popular fruit in Thailand, they started using papaya for their fruit salads tam som, which eventually became som tam. But recently historians are arguing that tam som already used papaya. Because papaya was already fully integrated into Laotian culture before this migration happened. But remember, this entire region was in a gray zone. On the map, it belonged to Siam and the French. 
but on the ground, the borders were kind of non-existent. The people of Isan and Laos lived in this region as if it were one. I mean, people who can speak Thai or Lao can even understand each other because their language comes from basically the same place. So in terms of their lives here, they weren't really in a different country until recently. Alright, back in Laos, and we're gonna try the papaya salad here. It's called Tam Som. Apparently the papaya salad here is much stronger than compared to the one in Isan, which is already considered pretty strong for Thailand. So I can't exactly say that I'm looking forward to tasting it, but this place looks beautiful. really red. Mm. Oh my god, this is so spicy. <laughs> this is so spicy. I can't even put in Oh, what the? It doesn't taste as fermented as I thought it would. I don't know if I can taste any. <coughs> I guess this is Laotian papaya salad. I'm actually scared to take another bite. If you love spicy food, definitely try Laotian papaya salad. If not, um, save yourself. You know, I would actually really like this if it wasn't killing me right now. I'm getting used to it. No, I'm not. <coughs> I need water! <laughs> Why are you still filming? So the Laotian argument is basically like what I said earlier. They already had their tradition of making sour, spicy salads called tam song. And papayas were already a popular fruit in Laos too. They definitely didn't need to go to Thailand to use papayas. It's a pretty simple argument, but sometimes the simplest answers are the correct ones. But again, when you think of papaya salad, you think of Thailand. So the argument is, does that make papaya salad more Thai or Laotian? Well, first off, why do we think of Thailand when we think of papaya salad? We're on our way to a temple called Wat Pu in the south of Laos. In the mid-1900s after World War II, Thailand started to standardize a lot of its cultural aspects. The Thai government knew that at the time, in order for it to survive, it needed a strong national identity. And it needed some sort of soft power to push out to the rest of the world. They eventually chose cuisine as their soft power of choice. I mean, there's a reason why Thai restaurants are literally everywhere and why Hollywood movies and shows keep on referencing Thai food. But to do this, Thailand needed to create a list of national dishes that represented the country. And this list needed to include everyone. They chose Som Tam for Isan because it was kind of the only dish that everyone else in Thailand sort of knew. Even though in the 50s and 60s, Som Tam was really hard to find, even in a place like Bangkok. It was only served at gas stations and sports stadiums, and were really only for people traveling from Isan. Alright, so Thailand included Som Tam into their national list of dishes, meaning that Som Tam was now an official Thai dish, a dish that represented Thailand. But it also represents Laos. So why didn't Laos really fight back? Why didn't Laos say anything when Thailand published their list? Well, remember, it was the mid-1900s in the 60s and 70s, and America was doing this to Laos. The primary aim of the United States government uh, in Laos is to assist the people of Laos to have the kind of government that they want to have. Laos is the most heavily bombed country in the world per capita. On average, bombs were dropped here every eight minutes for nine years. It was the Vietnam War, and America was bombing Laos for nine years. Laos is also a communist nation and was a key supply route for the communist North Vietnamese troops who were invading the South. The US bombed Laos because they wanted to disrupt this trail and win the war. But of course that never worked out. And to this day, Laos is still the most heavily bombed country in history. Not to mention, Thailand is already a much more powerful country and has a lot more say in the world than Laos does. Even if Laos wanted to, they didn't have the resources to push papaya salad to the world. This country has essentially been forced to live in the shadow of its much larger neighbors. And it's also still trying to recover from the American bombing campaigns. 
I'm outside this cafe right now. It's about to rain, so I'm gonna do this quickly. This cafe was actually bombed and shot at by the Americans during the war. I'm not, I don't want to use English too loudly here, but yeah, I'm just gonna like show you some remnants of bullet holes and whatnot. This is kind of crazy to look at. So this building that was um, bombed by the Americans has been converted to a cafe. But um, you can walk through the ruins and it's definitely not the proudest moment in American history, that's for sure. Alright, well, we're back in Thailand. I just wanted to say that I'm not saying papaya salad is definitely from Laos, or even that Thailand stole it from Laos. I think that papaya salad probably likely developed in Laos and Isan simultaneously when this region wasn't really split by this border. What Thailand did though was simply steal the opportunity from Laos to make papaya salad world famous itself. So now when you think of papaya salad, you think of Thailand, not Laos. Soft power is kind of weirdly scary like this. At the end of the day, papaya salad or som tom definitely belongs to Thailand. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't belong to Laos, either. I wanted to make this video because I think food history is usually pretty opaque. It's kind of all over the place. And I think we have to remember that when a lot of our food was created, it happened before a lot of our current modern-day countries existed. Nowadays, countries around the world are trying to claim dishes against their neighbors to show cultural superiority or sometimes for worse reasons. So I think we need to remember that it doesn't really matter where our food comes from specifically. What matters is how we eat it and who eats it. Which is in the northeastern part of the country. The chickens. But here's the thing. Papaya salad isn't native to Thailand or anywhere in Asia. But here's the thing. Portuguese in the 15th and 1600s and they were brought here by Portuguese explorers in the 15th and 1600s. They're from Central America and were brought here by the... They're from Central America. I actually can't film here because there's too many damn chickens. Oh my god.